All right, so we got our whole 3D seat set up, and that's that's really the hard part of this, is just getting all this set up and making sure everything looks good. So let's go ahead and switch back to an orthographic view. Make sure you have your uh, custom view selected if you switch to the custom view, and we're going to do the left view. What we're going to do is we're going to add a camera into this, and we're going to do a really simple zoom in using what's called a one-node camera. So let's first grab our camera. You're going to go up to Layer, New, Camera, or Command, Option, Shift, C. And then you'll get your camera settings. Um, we're not going to go into a great bit of detail on this. We're going to stick mainly to what the presets do and what the two types of cameras do. And the presets will actually affect a lot of this information down here. So first, let's look at the two types. You have two types of cameras. You have a one-node camera and a two-node camera. Um, the one-node camera uh, is the simpler of the two. It basically works like a normal camera. Um, work, you're able to move it around and everything like that. And the real difference is with the two-node camera, it's got what's called a point of interest, which allows you to lock it onto objects. And then when you move the camera either uh, left and right or up and down, the camera will automatically tilt to face that object. Um, it's a little bit harder to deal with, uh, especially when you're first coming into working with cameras and working with 3D in general. Um, so it's only useful in certain situations. And what we'll do is we'll actually make a one-node camera in this video. Uh, in the following video, we'll switch it to a two-node camera. And we'll look at why you would want to use a two-node camera. So for now, set it to one-node camera. And then we have our presets over here. So the presets will change the um, focal length of the camera. And it's going to adjust whether you have a... Um, Kind of the exact same view that we're seeing right now versus a wider angle view or a more of a telephoto view. Um, so the lower the number goes, the more of a wide angle you get. It's going to force more perspective onto the image. And the higher the number is, the um, more of like a telephoto lens you get. And that's going to actually flatten out the perspective a little bit more. Uh, a lot of designers like to use like the 35 millimeter camera because it'll add like a little bit more dynamic um, look to it since it's pushing a little bit more perspective. It's just slightly more wide angle. Uh, but we're going to stick with the 50 millimeter, and that way we get the exact same look that we're getting right now. Let's go ahead and set it to 50 millimeters. Set it to one node camera, and we'll just leave it named camera one um, for right now. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that nothing really changes other than in your left view, you can now see this little pink box with these lines coming out. Um, that pink box is your camera, and the lines coming out are its field of view. Um, this is what kind of creates the one-point perspective. Um, as things get closer to it, you know, it's, it's not able to fit as much in its field of view. As they get further away, you can fit a lot more into its field of view. So the first thing you want to do is get off of the Unified Camera Tool. The Unified Camera Tool is complete and total garbage. It is not useful for animating your cameras. Do not ever animate your cameras using the Unified Camera Tool. It is only useful when you're in the custom, like a 3D environments, to kind of pan around and see the different directions. The reason that is, is um, kind of the simile of it is uh, working with um, first person shooter video game versus a third person 3D game. Um, and how hard it is to control it. It's much harder to control when you're inside of the camera. It's a lot easier to control it if you can see it outside of the camera. Um, and you'll understand this kind of as we work through this, because what we're going to do is we're going to animate our camera with the orthographic view, and we're going to look at what it looks like over in our active camera view over here. Let me get this a little bit better framed. And we're going to start right here. We're just going to do a very simple zoom in. Um, we're going to be zooming into this little uh, coffee house right here. So I'm going to select my camera layer, press P to get my position property. You can see that it, it has to be 3D, so it's naturally going to show the 3D options. And with my playhead at the start of my animation, I'm going to go ahead and enable my keyframes for positions. Then we're going to move the playhead forward. And let me zoom in a little bit to my camera. I'm going to go up to my camera, I'm going to grab it um, from the center of the camera, which is that pink box right here, and start dragging forward. Now, if you want it to not move up and down as you're dragging forward, you can hold down the shift key after you start dragging forward. And you just want to get it so it frames this cafe pretty well. So maybe stopping about right there. Looks good. Now, it's going to look a little bit 
garbagey, and that's just because we have to turn on what's called the continuous rasterization switch for this. So make sure you go through, let me collapse all my layers. Go through and turn on the continuous rasterization switch for all of your 3D layers. Um, and we'll even turn on our, for our back layer. Um, and our back layer is not going to move at all with our camera since it's not a 3D layer. Only 3D layers respond to your camera movements. Um, but we do want to scale our back layer up a little bit because when I originally designed it, it only went to the bottom of the screen. And you can actually see where it gets cut off sometimes while the camera's moving through. That's what's creating this kind of... It's a little hard to see, but there's a little bit of a gap that happens right there sometimes. Um, so I'm just going to scale it up some so that it fills the whole screen. As long as you have that continuous rasterization switch on, it won't lose quality at all. Okay. all right, let me see my position values again. So what we have now, let me go ahead and switch this back to one view temporarily. So we have this really nice zoom in effect. It's going to take a minute or two to render, depending on the speed of your computer. You notice that it's a lot different from your normal zoom. You can actually see the depth of the layers. That's because of what's called the parallax effect, which is why we're working in what's called the parallax lesson. The parallax effect basically just um, says that whatever's closer to the camera is going to look like it scales more or moves more, depending on whether you're zooming in or zooming out, um, or panning along or going up and down an image. Uh, and it just creates more depth in that sort of way. And this is a good way to work with 2D layers and 3D space and still have that 3D feel to it. Okay. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at how to turn this into a two-node camera and look at the uses for a two-node camera as well.